Let's talk about a series now. So this is my general representation of a series. Okay? Now, um, you have some funky looking like <laughs> stuff here, right? Don't let it spook you. It's not that big of a deal. So first of all, let's talk about this, you know, notation. This is a summation. It's called this notation. It's called summation notation. And what it says is to take the sum. Take the sum, right? That's what it tells you to do. It means a sum. And it's a Greek letter um, in mathematics that represents take the sum here. So um, you see that you have stuff written underneath the summation notation and on top. Well, down here, sometimes you'll see an I. You could see J. You could see K. You might see different letters. That doesn't matter. That's just called the index. And what it does is it tells you the variable that you're using and it tells you where, where you're starting. This is your starting point. Okay, starting value, starting point, whatever. It's not an actual ordered pair. It's just a starting position. And here is the um, last term in your series. This is the ending point, let's just say. Ending point, okay, or the nth term. And... What a series is, it's basically a sum of a sequence. It's a sum of a sequence. Now, the sequence, again, could be finite or it could be infinite. You could take the sum of some uh, infinite sequences and you could take the sum of all finite sequences. But once we take the sum of a sequence, then we call it a series. Now, um, whatever comes after the summation notation is basically your formula. Okay, it tells you how to find each term. So you can't have a summation without something next to it because otherwise you wouldn't know what to take the sum of. So this says take the sum of this situation starting at this point, continuing to increase by one until you get to this. So let me show you what I mean by that. So here's an example of a series represented in summation notation. Um, Okay, so my index is i, I'm starting at the number 1, and I'm going to increase from 1 until I get to 4. And you're only going in terms of integers, so I'm not going to do decimals. I'm just going to go from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4, I stop at 4. Okay, so when you start here and end here, you're only adding 1 to each term, right? So these basically are like the term numbers, from the first term to the fourth term. And then of this formula, and then this says add that up. So let me show you what I mean by that. Okay. So I'm starting when i is equal to 1. So I'm going to start by plugging 1 into that formula. 3 times 1 squared. This is like my first term. Next term would be when i is 2. 3 times 2 squared. This is like my second term. Third term, plug in 3. Fourth term, replace i with 4. And I keep going until this guy is, is the same as this. So I'm starting at 1, this first term, second term, third term, and I end at the fourth term. That's what this tells me to do. Plugging it into this formula. Now this notation, this summation notation says add up all of these terms. And then whatever I get from this is representing the sum, this the summation of this, or the answer to this. Evaluate this, that's the answer. So 3 times 1 squared is 3 plus, this is 3 times 4, 12. Plus, this is 3 times 9, 27. Plus, this is uh, 3 times 16, 48. And then add all that up. <clears throat> 48 plus 27 plus 12 plus 3, I get 90. So this is equal to 90. Now, converting from this into this form, right, is a little bit easier than converting from this form into the summation form. So I want to represent the sum in summation notation. So I'm going in the opposite direction. Okay, summation notation. So you have to find the formula first. So that might be like the hardest part, finding the formula. But you know you're going to add stuff. 
And what I like to do is I like to um, say, well, this, this helps me. I like to write the term number underneath or on top. So this is the first term, the second term, the third term, the fourth term, and I'm not sure which term number that is yet. Once I find my equation, my formula, that'll help me determine what term number that is. So my summation notation is going to start at 1. Okay, and I can use whatever variable I want. So we'll do, you know, I again. I is one. I don't know where to end because I'm not sure what term number that is. Now, my formula here has to basically be explicit. So it has to be such that I'm able to replace the term number into the formula to get this term. So obviously all of the top, you know, numerators have one so that's easy it's the bottom that I have to figure out but I, um, you'll see some interesting patterns happen so for example I noticed that 2 to the first power is 2 2 to the second power is 4 2 to the third power is 8 2 to the fourth power is 16 so this looks like it's going to be 2 to the i power now what I like to do is I like to always whatever I write as my formula plug in these numbers and see if it matches the series. So for example, if I start with 1, is 1 over 2 to the 1 the same as the first term here? When I plug in 2, is 1 over 2 to the second the same thing as my second term here? When I plug in 3, does it match my third term? When I plug in 4, does it match my fourth term? And so on and so forth. Now it does, correct? It does. So this is the correct formula. But now I have to figure out which term number this is. 2 to what power is 1024? So you could play, you could play with that 1020. So 2 to the, you play with numbers, whatever it is. But it's 2 to the 10th power. This is 2 to the 10th power. That means that this is my 10th term. So that means that I can, um, when I'm writing my summation notation to represent this sum, I'm starting at 1 and I'm ending at 10 of this formula. This is my summation notation of this. Now, if you want, I'm going to go through and check it just to verify, okay? Just to show you. If I were to rewrite this out as a sum, I start at 1, plug in 1, so 1 over 2 to the 1, plus. Next, 1 over 2 to the 2, plus. 1 over 2 to the 3, plus. 1 over 2 to the 4, right? I'm only increasing by 1. These represent term numbers. Plus. And it says end at 10, 1 over 2 to the 10th. Does this match what I have here? Yes, 2 to the first is 2, 2 to the second is 4, 2 to the third is 8. This matches exactly what I have here, therefore this is the correct formula for this sum.